Hello everyone, it's Soprano Musings Abroad, but for this video, call me Teacher Niece, okay? So um, I really enjoyed sharing um, a little bit of my, my lessons or how I conduct my lessons with you all uh, in a recent video. So I wanted to do that again. And considering tomorrow is Independence Day here in Poland, I thought I would share the recent slide that I made. Um, Again, with teaching with English wizards, we have to submit authentic materials. And so this is just one um, way that you can also hold your classes as well as create your own uh, PPTs uh, to submit as the authentic materials. Uh, my first one that I did was an introduction, basically me introducing myself to my students and getting to know more about them. If you haven't seen that video, uh, I will go ahead and post the, the, I guess the little box or tab or whatever thingy uh, with this video. And going on, we will go ahead and talk about Independence Day. Uh, again, I wanted to do something light because again, most of my students rescheduled <laughs> with me this week uh, so that they would have the day off because here in Poland, uh, Independence Day is always uh, November 11th. So uh, they wanted to make sure that they had the day off to spend with their families and I totally understand that. So I, I just created again this uh, really short slide. Uh, it's short because the time that it's going to take me to explain all of this to you will be short. However, my classes are 55 minutes long, so uh, you can stretch this out however you see fit. You can add more questions to a lesson similar to this. And again, I, I prefer to teach more towards conversational English with business English being uh, one of the main elements because again, most of my students are professionals and they work within a professional capacity. They got real, you know, real important jobs. So my job is to uh, help them build more confidence with their, their English speaking skills, as well as, you know, catch any grammatical uh, mistakes or errors that I, I hear and we talk about those. Uh, also, uh, their reading, making sure that they're pacing themselves and things like that. So anywho, enough about that. Let's move on to the PPT because I did say it was short. So yeah, we're going to go on. <laughs> so again, I have this little introduction and I usually start my lessons with small uh, conversational English again general questions like hi how are you how's your day been depending on what time of day it is uh, how's your evening because I do have a few uh, evening students um, or I'll ask them if it's you know it's a new week I'll ask oh how was your weekend what, what did you do you know I want to get them to become more comfortable with incorporating small talk in their conversation so I always start with that and then they they do the same so <clears throat> Again, uh, I tell my students, uh, happy early Independence Day, because they're having this lesson with me well before Independence Day. And uh, I, I let them guess <laughs> what we will would talk about for today's lesson. Okay. My first question to them is, what does Independence Day mean to you? This I, I really specify because I have uh, group lessons. So sometimes I have a uh, up to two to four students and I want them to know that yes one you will all speak <laughs> everyone will get a chance to speak that's the whole purpose of them being there at 7 a.m in the morning or at uh, 7 p.m at night and you will you will answer this question this is a gentle way of me stressing that by using the word you what does independence day mean to you so uh, my students have figured out their roll call, uh, and usually it's by whoever uh, shows up on the screen first, and that's the order that they, they answer these questions in. And then um, I, I throw in another question. Uh, what does Independence Day mean? If I see that they are uh, hesitant or they're struggling with answering this question, I just kind of start to pick at it, and I, I take out that word independence, and I ask them, what, what does this mean? Uh, how how can you give me an example of independence? And then we, we backtrack and then we come back to this question so hopefully they can answer it. <laughs> okay, 
the next question, how do you celebrate Independence Day? Again, I love the word you, by the way. It's singular, it's plural, and my students know when they hear it that that means, yes, I am speaking to you. I'm speaking to all of you. So please answer this question, everyone. <laughs> uh, and then again, if there are any questions with the word celebrate, or if they're not sure um, what I mean, I, I usually start there by asking them, okay, so if we're celebrating, what are we doing? Are we happy? Are we sad? What's going on? <laughs> and, and what are we celebrating? And then they get into it and they're very happy. And obviously I use a, a small photo here of someone holding a Polish flag so they understand, ah, okay, this is, we're still on the same topic. So yeah. And I, I engage with them while we're talking. So I, I ask them the question and as they're answering, I, I share my thoughts about their answer. Like, oh yeah, that's really cool. That's, that's similar to what we do because I want them to become a little bit more comfortable with how we speak in English because in English, we don't ask a question and then answer it and then ask a question and then answer it. There's a, there's a method to the madness. So generally speaking, uh, you want to go with uh, a question and two statements. So if you ask a question and someone answers it, you don't just immediately ask them another question. You, you want to comment on it. And a lot of my students are not familiar with that technique. <laughs> there, um, so there are some times where they, they tend to struggle or they, they get a little flustered when uh, I interrupt them essentially because that's what I'm doing. I mean, they, they answered my question and instead of me asking them another question, I, I comment on it or I share uh, a short story as well. And again, they're not used to that. So sometimes it can throw them off, but I just give them a, a, few, a minute or two and they, they get right back up. So we're good. <laughs> okay. Why is this Independence Day so important? This question is phrased exactly the way it is for a reason. So I want them to really uh, think about Independence Day, not in the past, but right now. Why is this in this moment, on this part of the timeline, in this present time, why is Independence Day so important? And uh, I could tell uh, earlier today, a lot of my students, uh, they, they weren't exactly sure. And I finally had a student ask me, well, what, what does it mean when you say, why this? And you guys, I'm not even gonna lie, I almost got up and did the Carlton. <laughs> because that, that is what I want them to do. I want them to start thinking instead of just answering questions. And I, I was so happy to hear that, you guys. It was like 7.20 in the morning. And I was just like, oh, man, they're, they're not tapping in on that just yet. How, and I was thinking, how, how can I get them to really uh, dissect this question and really look at the sentence structure in it to get that point across? And the minute she said it, I, I literally, I wanted to jump up and just start dancing. I was so happy. <laughs> But yeah, so why is this Independence Day so important? I, I, and I made sure to, to emphasize, to stress this Independence Day so important. So we got there in the end, and that's what matters. So, yeah, like I said, uh, these questions, you, you can, um, if you, depending on your students, if you have two students, you could probably... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? You could probably stretch these questions for about 10 to 20 minutes to make sure that everyone has gotten a chance to fully uh, articulate what it is that they want it to say. And then what would you like to share about Independence Day with foreigners? Because again, I'm new to Poland. I don't know anything about Independence Day. So uh, yeah, tell me a little bit about what you would like people that are coming into your country to know about Independence Day and why they should act right on this day. Like, <laughs> that was essentially what I was asking with this question. And I got some really good answers and I got some really surprising answers because um, people are woke I, in Poland. I, I wasn't expecting that. So uh, yeah, I was very, very happy at, <laughs> at 8 a.m. Again, I, I have classes from uh, 7 a.m. to like 9, 10 a.m. Monday through Thursday. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's hard because it's early. So you you got to get up early. You got to prepare yourself. You got to bring the energy. 
And I was fully prepared to do that with this question. However, my students <laughs> were on board with this line of questioning and they, they were able to really discuss this. I did not have to uh, work as hard or try as hard to really engage them into answering this question, which was a very pleasant and welcoming surprise. So one more thing. I have this section now, um, true or false, because I noticed um, when I was submitting my authentic materials, I, I saw an example, <clears throat> excuse me, of uh, a previous uh, submit, uh, submitted uh, authentic materials. And I guess they, they want to see more exercises from us. So um, instead of just asking like open-ended questions on mine, I, um, I'm starting to incorporate more things. Um, I have a few more lessons where I have the students uh, do word formation, where I will intentionally leave a sentence uh, missing a word, and they will have to uh, fill in that that uh, that sentence. But for today's, again, today's lesson, I kept very light, so I uh, used true or false, and I had to look up this information to make sure that it was correct. So um, I had each student read a sentence and then I had them tell me if it was true or false and why they think it is in fact true or false. And then I had everyone uh, either agree or disagree with them because again, we're talking about Independence Day and you know I wanted to make sure that they, they all contributed even though you know one person was giving the first answer. And if you look very closely at this PPT, you can see that I have marked uh, each of these questions so that I would not forget whether they are true or false. If you notice what I did there, let me know in the comments because again, I don't know much about Poland. So I had to make sure that I was right because I didn't want the lesson to become a, okay, let school teach your niece on really how Poland was established. I didn't want it to turn into that. <laughs> so I had to make sure that this is all correct. And yes, I went straight to Wikipedia because you know what? Okay, I happily, happily donate annually to Wikipedia for this very reason. So shout out to Wikipedia. <laughs> this video is not sponsored by Wikipedia, but I'm just saying. Okay, so this I added here for you all to see because now that we have answered our questions, we have reviewed our true or false, now we're getting towards the end of our lesson. And usually um, by the time we get to the true or false part, we only have like 10 minutes left. So this is the time where I have the students ask me a question and I usually prompt them by saying, okay, so from all of the questions that I've asked you today, which of those questions would you like to ask me? And that uh, usually it takes some time because they're all trying to ask the quickest, the easiest question. And it's like, uh, 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 one, one student at a time, please. <laughs> and then uh, after answering their questions, uh, I go ahead and we review what we talked about, uh, what were the key points of today's PPT, and I just send them on their way. And I, I leave them with lots of praise at the end. If someone asked me a really good question or if someone asked me a question that I did not ask them, but they were prompted by a question that I asked, I really, I always shout that student out because they're, they're on it, they're, they're using their noggin. <laughs> um, and then also uh, if anyone's had any questions about the homework, because for my homework, I, I give them uh, each listening exercises because that's the one thing that um, we don't really cover using the platform that we use because it's just, it, it's time consuming, listening exercises and writing exercises. So I, I try to rotate those, but mostly I, I tend to lean towards listening exercises because I want them to get used to hearing uh, different accents and people from, you know, different countries speaking in English. So they become more aware and more confident in that skill. So, yeah, this is where I wind down. And after that, I, I tell them to go off and be awesome. <laughs> so uh, at this time, I would like to uh, open the floor to all of you. That's usually what I would say to my students. And I'm going to say it to all of you. So at this time, I am opening the floor to you. 
please feel free to uh, ask me a question down below in the comments. If you have any suggestions or if you want to share uh, part of your lesson that you love doing with your students, uh, I would love to hear about it in the comments. And as always, be inspired, stay inspiring, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye. <laughs>